Hi, this is Kevin from Let Me Tech You, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to build a test environment using Amazon LightSail. Now, Amazon LightSail is almost, it's just a VPS, so virtual private server that essentially leaves all of the back-end system to AWS. So it's, it's pretty much a managed service. So you don't have to really worry about the um, too much of the maintenance behind it. Uh, like a lot of it's kind of like template um, based. So when you do set things up, you basically don't have to worry about um, how to configure and attach the IP address, uh, you know, things like that. Um, the type of, uh, it, it kind of walks you basically through everything. So I'm going to show you really how simple this is. So I'm going to sign into the console. And when you sign into, so uh, LightSail is only available in a couple different regions, uh, but basically you need to sign in and just search for LightSail. And it's gonna take you to like, almost like its own little site. So when you get into this dashboard here, basically you can see how it's all kind of provisioned for you at the top. So there's different things you can kind of configure, but it's pretty simple um, to set up. But if you're like, say testing, or you're just wanting to create a quick dev environment. Um, it's also great for if you're trying to just build like a website, like something real simple, but you don't want to have to worry about too much of the back end type stuff. So with that being said, um, you come in here and you can create an instance and that's what we're going to do here. And now this instance can live in a couple different zones. So I have Ohio, it's a US um, East 2A. So it's using US East 2. And then the availability, availability zone is zone A. So you can change these. And like I said, you got US, I mean, Ohio, Virginia, Oregon. Um, I don't see US West 1. So like I said, it's only available in this couple uh, couple different regions. So it's best to put it closer to maybe where you're going to be utilizing your services at. Um, another great thing about Amazon LightSail is it's very, you know, straightforward pricing. So I'm going to pull up. Um, just a quick site to show you. So if you go to pricing here, it's really simple. Um, check this out. You, like it says, it really says no nonsense monthly pricing. Everything's kind of included. Static IP addresses, DNS management, one-click SSH terminals, um, one-click RDP for Windows. So it really kind of makes it intuitive to use, be able to start learning immediately on the go. So we're going to go back here. I'm going to keep it as Ohio. I'm going to keep it as Zone A, but you can pick other ones if you want. And then I'm going to do a Windows instance. And as you can see, Linux is there. But so it kind of just it's just a real simple walkthrough. So you can do App plus OS. So this here is going to give you the option to set up a SQL Server um, using 2016 Express, or we're going to just do OS only. So I'm going to do Windows Server 2019 which is the, the latest there um, for what they have. Now you can add some additional launch scripts. So these could be things like um, PowerShell script to um, install Active Directory, or you know maybe you just got scripts that you wanna run at launch to kind of speed up the process of your creation. So you can do that there. And as it says here, LightCell will use the default SSH, SSH key pair for this region to retrieve the administrator password. So you don't have to worry about that there. And then basically now we get down into our instance plan. So they kind of sort it um, based off your filters here. So if you just want to do price per month, you can choose. And they kind of entice you with some three free months here. So it kind of gives you a little bit of a room to um, test some stuff out without having to get um, charged there. So as you um, switch these around, you can see the pricing changes a little bit. Just kind of depends on kind of what you're going after. If you're going after processing speed, maybe you want more processors. Maybe you need just more storage. You're going after more storage. So now you don't have to really go ahead and figure out how to attach all these different things, but we're just going to go with price per month because we just want something simple. So I'm going to go with this $8 one. And then you can come down and identify your instance. So I'm just going to call this Dev, Dev2022. Uh, SRBR. So it's going to be my dev server. And then you can add some tags. Now, if you're, you know, in a production or um, 
and for a uh, large enterprise, you may want to do some tagging to kind of help with like billing and things like this, kind of maybe tag it to the department that it's uh, being utilized for, or maybe your um, in, uh, applications that you're going to be utilizing this for, things like that. So having a nice tagging scheme is uh, very crucial, um, very beneficial um, when you start to do a lot of things within AWS to kind of keep things synchronized. So now that we have that set up, uh, that's literally it. As you can see, we have a server, half a mega RAM, one virtual CPU, 30 gig SSD. And then you already can see here, now we already have our IP address that's attached to it. Now it says pending because it's being built. So as you create these instances, they'll start to pop up in here. And then now, uh, another thing great about that is you don't have to worry about the security group, stuff like that. So all that stuff's already managed. So if you, you want to go and manage it, you can do some things as far as connecting directly to it. So I can take this IP address, connect using an RDP client. Well, we already have that. So actually, if I want, I could just copy that. Just go to remote desktop. Punch that in, hit connect. Password is going to be administrator, or the username is administrator, and then the password, I'm going to retrieve it here. And so it's not available yet, so the instance is probably still being built. But that's okay. Once this uh, button here probably comes up, we'll be able to connect to it using the um, browser-based RDP client. So I'm just going to refresh that real quick just to see if that's ready to go. Okay, so that's still connecting, but while that's going, we'll, we'll um, go through some of these other things here. So from the storage perspective, you can uh, attach some additional disk. Um, it shows you the disk path. And so if you want to add additional disk, it's real simple. You come in, and then you just allocate some more disk to it. Now, that's going to be great for if you're, you know, maybe need more storage as you start to grow. And they make it really easy for you to be able to um, grow as your, say, application or your environment, whether this is a dev or a production environment, starts to grow. Because maybe starting out, you don't want really too much resources because you don't know what, where it's going to go. But as you grow, it's easier to kind of allocate newer um, amounts of data or you know RAM or CPU or whatever to your instance to give it more power. So I'm going to go back and we're actually going to cancel out of this here. So I'm going to go back there. Then there's some metrics. So to be able to uh, utilize, see your CPU utilization, kind of gives you a good sense of, you know, where your peak times are. Um, you know, you got incoming network traffic to monitor that. And then you can get into the networking. So you can see you got a static IP address that's already provisioned, your private IP, which is going to be set for your uh, internal network there, and then obviously some firewall rules. So like I said, you don't have to manage it initially yourself, but say you just want to make it more secure and um, you don't want to have SSH enabled or you don't want uh, port 80 enabled because you're, you just need to RDP directly into it and you don't want to you know, have the whole um, world being able to access it. You can then go ahead and even restrict it down to like say IP addresses. So source address could be, you know, say my home address. And if you want to find that, you can easily just go to Google and type in what is my IP. It'll give you what your IP address is and then you can put it in there to further um, improve the security of your um, virtual private server. Then some IPv4, uh, IPv6 networking type stuff and then firewalls for that. And then now uh, you get into like load balancing. So, you know, if you're building, say, a web application and you want to increase the, uh, you know, add a new instance and then put a load balancer on it so that you can improve the traffic coming to those, you can do that as well. Then, you know, we get into uh, back, uh, backing up. So as you, um, if this is more than a dev environment, you may want to do some snapshotting so that, you know, if you um, have something that you're working on for a while, you don't want to have to, you know, build the whole thing back up in case something happens. You can do some snapshots or do some automatic snapshots to say, hey, take a snapshot every day. And in that way, if something uh, occurs, like an accident or something, you can, or you know, you're building something out and you want to go back to a previous uh, state, you can do that easily there. 
So and it make it, it make it real simple. It's really just clicking, you know, click um, through a couple tabs and you're good to go. And then some other stuff, like I said, tags, history, and then you can delete everything, which we'll do here in a second. So now this is uh, available. So now if I hit connect using RDP, this browser is going to come up. Now this is going to be the Windows browser, the light cell browser that gets um, that pops up. Now you can use native RDP, which we were using down there, which I'll bring back up. So if I paste that in there, administrator, and then if I should be able to grab the password now. Okay, so we're gonna be deleting this, so not too worried about sharing that. So then I'm gonna hit okay, and then I'm gonna hit yes. Now remember, this instance is very small, so you're not going to get a lot of, uh, it's not going to be really fast in terms of the speed that you're going to get. So this is popping up. So it, it might still be coming up because you, I think it's only half a mega RAM. So, I mean, you're not going to get a lot of uses out of that. So I would probably suggest going with something maybe a little bigger, you know, to kind of speed things up. But as you can see here, we have our full instance ready to go less than probably five minutes, you know, minus some of the extras that I've talked about. So, you know, that's a great way to kind of get yourself going. If you're, you know, new to the cloud, want to test out some, uh, you know, dev or software based stuff in the, um, without having to spin up an EC2 instance, provision a static IP, provision a VPC, um, subnets, routing tables, all the other jazz that kind of get in the way of learning. So again, that's it. Um, you know, once you're done and you're, you know, you don't want to kind of have that thing lingering around, charging eight bucks a month, just go in there, delete that, and then you're all done. Again, you know, I hope you learned something and that helped out a lot for anyone that might have not have known of this service. Uh, there's a lot of other things you can do with it, which I'll probably do some videos on that as well. But again, if you have any other questions, you know, leave something in the comments down below and then I'll get back with you. Again, thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you next time.